my name is Claire and this is my channel, Woodshed Theory. Here, I make content about what it is like to live as an adult on the autism spectrum and whatever else feels good to me. So if that sounds good to you, or if you're feeling particularly gracious today, and I hope that you are, please go ahead and click the subscribe button. Ring the bell. I almost forgot to mention that I put out videos three times a week. Click the like, click the like. This journey starts a few weeks ago at my local thrift store where I stumbled upon the most beautiful curio cabinet I had ever seen. I felt strangely drawn to it and I knew right away that it had to come home with me. After paying a mere $20 for this beauty, I loaded it up into my car and brought it home. It was in a state. Here you can see I had already been testing out some things to put in it. It reminded me so much of a spooky witch's cabinet, an apothecary where I could keep all of my trinkets and fun things I've collected over adventures in my life. It had so much work to be done. As you can see, it's literally in pieces. First thing that I did was I went in with some Dawn dish soap and water and I washed the entire piece. And then afterwards, I went and did Murphy oil soap and water and washed the piece one more time. It was super gross and super dirty, but I planned on doing some Restora finish on the outside, so I wanted to make sure that whatever I was doing or painting, it was on a clean surface. After I cleaned out all of the dirt from the cabinet, you were able to actually see the markings from all of the old bottles that sat inside of the cabinet over the years. And I just loved that detail. I was going to keep it, but I ended up painting over it, but I thought it spoke to the history of the piece and made it even more special. Early on, I realized that this was not going to go the way that I thought that it would. I started to try and take things apart and see what I had to work with. Glue of time had hit my cabinet and it is not coming apart unless you break it off like most of it was broken apart already. Here I'm trying to remove a dowel that was holding on the top piece and had broken but as you can see it's not going very well. But in a way, I kind of liked that none of this was working because you could tell that people had tried to fix this piece on the top many times and it's always broken off. So at least I'm not alone. At this point, nothing had gone to plan. So I decided to do something that I knew I could do and that was fill in any gaps or broken pieces with wood filler. The inside of the doors especially had uh, cracked over time, so I filled all of those cracks in so I'd have a nice smooth surface to paint. This part was actually a lot more fun than I thought it would be. I found it very relaxing to fill in all of the cracks, and all you need to do is wait for it to dry and then sand it down, and then you can paint or stain over this. Unfortunately, the backing on the door had come away from its original position, so I did put some wood glue down in the crack, and then I took some painter's tape and basically taped it back into position so that it could dry in that position. The arm, I guess you would call it, on the left side of the cabinet had broken. So here I am trying to remove it. It is not coming off. So I decided to just leave it and glue all the pieces together on the cabinet. 
I first propped it up together with some painter's tape and then I took some wood glue on half of a q-tip and filled in the broken pieces and taped it all together so that it could dry in the correct position. Now I know that this isn't ideal. Uh, it's not ever going to be as strong as it was originally, but these side cabinets uh, hold themselves up from the top so I'm not really worried that this is going to break off and I won't put anything heavy on that shelf. On the other side of the cabinet I am using one of the old screws I found in one of the drawers to screw back on the arm as best as I can. I didn't get it all of the way there but by the end it was good enough and then I used wood glue to hold everything back in place and taped it until it would dry. So I won't be putting anything very heavy on these shelves uh, because they're not as strong as they could be. But I think the overall fix went really well and it looks beautiful so I'm not complaining. I also went back and glued the other side just to give it a little bit of extra support. I took a fine sanding block, like a finishing sandpaper, and sanded down inside and out of the entire cabinet because I'm about to put some new finish on it and I wanted to make sure that everything was smooth and any splinters that might have been there from over the years were smoothed out and I just have a clean canvas. Now we've gotten to one of my favorite parts. I've used Restora Finish before on kitchen cabinets and I have this left over. All you're gonna do is take the product and basically wipe down the entire cabinet. Anywhere that you want the finish restored and it is the stain and top coat all in one. It makes everything look so beautiful and new. I probably ended up doing two coats of the this you're supposed to let it dry for 30 minutes in between coats but i did do touch-ups at the end and it looked so beautiful and amazing and it made it look brand new then i went and put the entire thing back together i didn't film all of it many of the pieces still had the nails connected so i just tapped everything back together then I glued on the remaining trim piece that still had yet to be put on. It's the beginning of day three and I'm getting to remove all of the tape that was holding on the glued objects in place and everything glued perfectly and looked amazing so I was really happy with the results. Today was finally the day that I got to paint the inside of the cupboard so I was really carefully preparing the bottom of the cupboard, putting down some paper and taping it there to make sure that none of the original wood that I wanted to keep got painted green. Finally, on day three, we are painting. I was so excited to get to this part. I am using Folk Art Home Decor chalk paint and antique green in the eight ounce bottle. It worked really well. I ended up doing two coats, which took about an afternoon to do one coat and then let it dry and then do another coat. I was as careful as I could to make sure everything was covered and that I wasn't getting paint anywhere I shouldn't. 
but this process was also extremely relaxing. I just put on some YouTube videos and enjoyed the time in quiet, just doing something kind of mundane and slow and peaceful. I also ended up painting the doors and I did two coats on the doors as well. I'm using foam brushes and I also filled in any detailed spots with a smaller paintbrush. Isn't peeling off the painter's tape at the end the most satisfying part? So after I finished painting and peeling off the tape, I went in and did any small tiny touch-ups in the paint. Oh yeah, doesn't get any better than peeling off the tape. Unfortunately, when I peeled up the tape, it had done its job, but it had also taken up some of the finish that I had put down the day before. So I went back in and did another coat of the Restora finish all around the bottom where the tape was and it fixed it perfectly. So. All right, everyone, it is going so well. Look at this beautiful thing. It looks even better than I could ever imagine. Like, oh my gosh. And the inside. <gasps> the color. It's getting better even as it dries. I could leave it here, but I found a few things while I was shopping. Maybe this won't be to everyone's taste, but... So the first thing that I found, let me make sure you can see it. Can you see that these are like, they're like little corner brackets, but they're like moths, owls, bats, creatures. So I thought I'd go around every one of those with I4 So I'm going to put them on the corners of the doors here. I found these from Jim Holtz. It's like a scrapbooking designer company. They sell it at Joann's. This was in the Halloween section and I saw these. There was another one um, that said Bone Collector as well. They're like these metal plaques. This one says the Apothecary. I can't say that. Pa Apothecary. There we go. Apothecary found objects and curious things. And I don't know if you know this, in the history of museology, museums, uh, the cabinet of curiosity is kind of the beginning of the idea of the modern day museum. So I'm in between, I, I'm in between apothecary, apothecary, there we go, and curious things because this to me is more in line with the look of the cabinet. So I'm probably gonna go with that, but I guess we'll have to see, I, I don't know. So I was thinking, I can't really put it on the outside, but I was thinking about putting like it in the middle here on the first shelf. I went ahead and measured the middle of the shelf and then used some E6000, E600, what's it called? That glue to glue it on to the shelf and then I taped it up in place. Then I had to lay down the whole cabinet so that I could put the tacks into the corners of the brackets that I had purchased. This was very difficult. I had to hold the nail with tweezers and I wasn't even able to put in every single nail, but what I could put in looked really pretty, so I'm happy with it. Then I hung up the brackets to hang it into the wall, which means we're in the home stretch. I'm so handy.
And here's me hanging my finished beautiful shelf onto the wall. I had to make a few adjustments, but it ended up hanging beautifully. And I was just so excited because it looked exactly as I had pictured it when I first saw it in the store. So I was really excited to get the entire thing cleaned up and start filling it with all of my treasures from my life. When it came to actually filling the cabinet, I tried to pick some things that looked spooky and natural, but I really wanted to focus on the piece acting as a memorial for some of the losses I've had recently in my life. I chose to put the apothecary plaque up because I was thinking about the idea of healing and how a apothecary is meant to house medicines and different herbs that were used for healing and I thought maybe this could be a place that I could use for healing as well. So on the top shelf there I have put up a tribute to my rabbit that just passed and then on the bottom shelf I have put up a wedding picture of my grandparents. My grandfather recently passed as well and I just thought this could be a beautiful tribute to them while still looking beautiful and having special things. I can look at this shelf and just remember all of the special animals and people that were in my life and kind of dwell on that and heal from, from those losses. I finished up the project by decorating the outside of the cabinet with plenty of plants and different figurines that I have as gifts from relatives. And here is the final result. I'll let you enjoy it. Well friends, I hope that you have enjoyed the makeover of my little witch cabinet. I found the experience very healing and I can't wait to fill it with more curiosities. If you have any questions, let me know and I will talk to you next time. Bye!